to DC Today. My name is Brian Seitel. Today is Thursday, April 20th. And uh, down, down day in markets, we, uh, futures were down last night a little bit too, but not anything real significant. But we opened down about 150 points on the day. Um, we kind of traded back up, not quite to fair value, but close to it, and then sold off before the close, then down something like 109 points on the day. Um, the uh, rates uh, today, interest rates were down um, a little bit across the curve. The curve actually steepened a tiny bit, but the 10-year closed down six basis points on the day, something like 3.54%. Um, uh, so so uh, a little, little, little rally in bonds, a little sell-off in stocks. Um, we talked about this a little bit, but the, um, the kind of collapse of equity volume has been pretty significant. About a month ago, in March, we were at, we had a VIX at something like 35, and um, and and actually I take it back. That was that was going back to October. October, I would say the VIX was close to 35, something like that. We kind of came down um, about 10 points. We were 25 about a month ago, and then today, while it was up, volatility was up today because of sort of a, a, a down market. Um, we're down to 17, 16, 17, something like that. So you're just sort of seeing this kind of erosion in volatility. And I'll talk about this a little more, but I think the, the reason is just the, the feeling of certainty around uh, a terminal Fed funds rate, call it five, five and a quarter, some, something close to where we are now. And so I think equities are feeling a little bit better um, in that regard. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say this is sort of off to the races. We're still in a very range bound market um, for the past 12 months. I don't know that that is going to change dramatically. You know, we're still expecting earnings to come in a little bit. And so at a valuation of call it 18 on the S&P, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it uh, off to the races by any stretch of the imagination. Um, we're just getting kind of a mixed bag of the economic data. You know, it, you know, there was data out today that I'll talk through, but it isn't real bad and it isn't really good. It's in the middle of those two, two things. And that's not necessarily bad for stock prices. Um, but uh, you are seeing that volatility come down across the board. Bond market volatility is still very, very high. To my knowledge, at least in my career, to call it 21 years, it's pretty much the highest bond market volatility that we've ever seen. The two-year um, Treasury uh, is down 100 basis points in about 40 days, to put it in perspective. It's a big move. So you're, you went from something like you know, 5.1 to 4.1 in a month. Um, and the reason for some of that is that you know, if you had Fed funds right now, call it 5%, it's a range, but let's say it was 5%. And a two-year treasury, meaning two years out from now, it's at a 4% yield. That obviously speaks to Fed funds you know, coming in and inflation being a little lower over the next couple of years. Um, the, um, uh, all that to say, you know, we have uh, jobless claims out today um, uh, down 245,000. We were expecting, um, or at 245,000, we were expecting something more closer to 248. It's basically in line with expectations, but it is showing sort of a continual easing path in the labor market, which is what the Fed wants to see. They're, they're starting to get what they want. You know, they've raised rates all the way up in one year, 500 basis points, and now we're starting to see it in the employment picture, and we're certainly starting to see it in the inflation picture. So for those that are looking for an end to QT or, or a Fed pause or a pivot. These are the things that we kind of want to see. They're just not quite robust enough. There's nothing really broken uh, other than the SVP uh, B collapse in the banking sector um, uh, for the Fed to just automatically cut rates. Um, but uh, I do suspect they'll probably hike in May and then pause for a period of time and see how these things work through, which is what the market is expecting. Um, we had uh, Felly Fed index for manufacturing today uh, pretty much collapsed. It was down 31, showed it, it printed a negative 31. We were expecting a negative 20. So we were expecting a negative number, but far more than we expected. And again, with the mixed bag comment, the New York Empire index just four days ago, or, or when was it, Tuesday, was, was a, a big expansion. So you're just seeing different numbers kind of work their way through the system. In aggregate, it's still expansionary. Um, so, so far, uh, I guess so good in that respect uh, with, uh, with how this will shake out. Um, we had existing home sales today, um, as expected. We're down uh, 2%, 2.4% month over month, and are now down 22% year over year. Um, so, continued weakness in housing, it's no surprise to anybody. Mortgage rates have gone 
up so high and um, just sort of a real tight um, uh, uh, real estate market. That said, and I think this is sort of interesting, the uh, the home builder index. So if you looked at just the index of all the home builders, you probably know a couple of them off the top of your head, is at 52 week highs. So what does that tell us? Again, with my mixed bag comment here on, on economic soup, why would the home builders be at all time highs if real estate and housing is going lower? You know, And I think that the reason is that um, it, you know, commodity input prices, call it lumber and labor and cement and all the things that go into copper, you know, go into building a house, uh, have come off their peaks. So they're, they're still higher than they were a year ago, but they're far lower than they were just recently. And I think that gives a little bit of margin back to some of the home builders. And I also think just structurally, we've underbuilt in this country for decades and decades. And so you're seeing that. The question I would ask is, have we ever had a recession with uh, with you know home builders making all time highs type of a thing, and um, I would say that that probably not you know and so that's a, a you know counter sign to those in the recession camp, along with technically expanding economic data because that's what we're seeing, um, you know it'd be unusual for that to be the case uh, if if we were contracting uh, in aggregate. Um, uh, also in the in the real estate side, uh, the difference now is that um, there's just more equity. You know, it, it's you, 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 you know, you end up with defaulting loans and people walking away from homes and all that sort of thing when there is an equity. People would be silly to do it if there's equity. That's a big deal. Um, the uh, the consumer in this country, to give you perspective, the consumer in this country has something like literally 50 percent less liability to net wealth ratio than uh, uh, from 2008. So if you think about where we were before the financial crisis, as a consumer in the country, we literally had twice as much liability as a percentage of net wealth as we do today. So the consumer is pretty darn healthy. And I think we spoke about this the other day on the DCT. But, you know, those things matter. Equity in homes matter. Health of consumer balance sheet matter. And, and it makes things more resilient. And so when they keep talking about a shallow recession, you know, if everybody's talking about a shallow recession, then there probably won't be a shallow recession. There probably won't be one. And I, I think the 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 statistics on consumer health and the real estate market health, even though it's come down in a, in a healthy way, um, th th those things do matter as far as what we can expect in the economy. Um, there was, and Dave, David actually was able to get in and write the Ask David section today. Um, and uh, the question was something like, when will the yield curve, you know, re you know go from being inverted to, to, to upward sloping? And the comment was, you know, when the Fed is able to bring down short-term rates. And I would second that and just say that that's all the Fed can control. They, they don't have control over long-term rates. So they don't set a 10-year rate. They don't set a 30-year rate. Um, and those rates have already come down. So, you know, a 10-year north of five down to three and a half, um, you know, is, uh, is a meaningful uh, contraction, uh, decrease in rate. Uh, the, uh, you still have a, a, a three-month bill at something like 5.1% which is where Fed funds probably will be in three months is, is my, my take on it. And so, you know, how can those two numbers sort of correct themselves? I don't think it's the 10 year going to seven uh, to make an upward sloping curve. I think it is gonna be that the Fed needs to lower interest rates. Historically speaking, going into recessions, uh, yield curves are, are usually inverted preceding a recession, that's no news. Um, they usually become less inverted as we get closer to recession. And technically, the twos, tens have gone from something like 100 basis points inverted to now 65 basis points as of today, 66 basis points, so less inverted. So does that mean that we're, you know, that's the, the hallmark of, of when we enter the recession? You know, t time will tell, but again, the economic numbers are not speaking to that as of right now. So. It's hard to have a recession. You have 156 million people employed. It's the most we've ever had employed, and it's more than we had last year. So it's hard to argue, unless there's a big change in consumer spending, how the economy would go lower with more people having jobs. Um, and that's kind of where we're at. The Fed knows that. And that's why they're likely going to raise on, Mar on May 3rd. Um, 25 bips is priced into the market. They'd be silly not to take advantage of it. They, they should raise. Um, if I were them, they should raise. Do I think they need to raise? I don't because we're already at 5%, so it's another quarter point, not going to do much. 
but I still think that they'll take advantage of it for some of those reasons. Um, you know, I'll kind of wrap it up here a little bit from there. I, I, um, I want to keep this to the point and, and succinct. Um, there was a decent amount written uh, in DC today that you can, you can check out. Um, tomorrow we have a flash read on um, uh, services and manufacturing PMI data. Um, not a lot else other than that. We'll have Dividend Cafe, Cafe for you tomorrow in your inbox on Friday, which is tomorrow. Um, if I don't speak to you, uh, and I hope I do, but if I don't, have a great weekend, and I uh, will be back with you soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm.